Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans, your second chance to gain insight and advice from the best instructors featured on the Golf Smarter podcast. Great golf instruction never gets old. Our interview library features hundreds of hours of game improvement conversations like this that are no longer available in any podcast app. When you swing a golf club, an interesting thing happens. The arms, okay, let's just say, at a dress, your arms are hanging comfortably from your shoulders and you've got your grip on there. And let's hope your grip's effective because, man, a good grip really helps. When you make your back swing now, your arms actually compress against your body. Your left arm works against your pec, your right arm supports your left arm, and your left arm basically compressed against your body. That is your impact condition. There's a level of compression that is attained in your backswing that you actually need to deliver to impact. You can't press into that position. Setting up at impact is pretty much useless because you're not going to return there unless your compressed arms get back to the golf ball. With another interview from the archives of Golf Smarter, here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Martin. Hello, Fred. How are you? I'm doing well. Happy New Year to you. Thank you, and thanks for having me today. Uh, it's my pleasure. I have uh, was I was told by a listener that I needed to get you on the show. Well, and then when great. Yes. And uh, Nick, thanks so much for the recommendation. And then I actually was talking to Dr. Zabrodsky over in Toronto, saying that mm-hmm. there's a possibility that you might be coming on the show. And I think I even forwarded you the email. He's like, oh, no, no, you have to get Martin on the well, show. Well, I have to have a goal. He's going there. Thank you, doctor, for recommending <laughs> me for the show. Yeah. I'm really excited to have you because you have, unlike most golf instructors, you've created a product. And I want to go right to the product. I don't usually do this. I usually want to go to to what the problem is. But I'm going to go to the product first and say how it's it's curing the problem. Um, The Tour Striker training aid. Right. Uh, To me, training aid is... A uh, terrible thing to say. <laughs> I, I've ne- th- this program's never been about training aids. It's been about mental game and um, strategy, uh, and not about swing paths, and not about you know no, mechanics. But- mechanics. But you've come up with an answer, and, and I've tried it, and within one bucket with your club, with your tour striker training aid. Thanks. Within one bucket, I learned so much about how bad my swing was. <laughs> well, you joke. You know, you said about um, – well, you didn't joke, but you said it's about some of the mental game. And, and it's, you know, more about, you know, having teachers on and so forth. See, I think the Tour Striker is a mental tool. Mm-hmm. I think it modifies intent. And that intent and, – and, and Fred, I really don't care how you make the Tour Striker work. You know, you modify your intent on how you want to deliver the tool to the club, whether it's a rhythm feel, whether it's a mechanical feel, it doesn't matter. You know, you're modifying your intent and that to me is, that's a mental change before a physical change. And if I can modify somebody's intent, and that was my goal with the Tour Striker, then I can create or they can create a more effective golf swing, however they want to do it. So... I think it is. A, I think it is a mental tool more than just a quote training aid where you slap it on and you look like a fool on the driving range. Right. Um, the only the other product that pops into my mind when you say modifies intent is one of my favorite golf products, and that's GPS. Sure. I think that with a GPS, you know, and some people complain about it. Yeah, you, I can tell by this. Yeah, I can't, right? So I think that by having a GPS, I can walk up to my next shot, see the distance and go, okay, I know what I need to do, which club I want to hit here, you know, taking into account right. also my lie and, the, and, the, yeah. and the, the wind and things like that, you know, uphill, downhill. But I, I, it, it, it definitely enhances my intent. It no, modifies I agree. my intent. I, 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 I agree. I, I love knowing the hard facts and the numbers. I mean, I, you know, I'm a, I use Golf Logics and I also use Bushnell. And I, you know, that might seem like overkill, but I lo- just like you, I love having the numbers. So then that, can, therefore, can help me make my decision to, to hit a better shot. Have you checked out the new Bushnell that has the GPS and the Rangefinder built into one, the hybrid? You know, I saw it at the show and. 
it does look i mean that is the ultimate engulfner gps slash laser combo i didn't I'm too cheap to buy one right now. <laughs> I, bought the, I bought the, uh, I think it was the 1500 model Bushnell last year and love it and use it. And, and, um, and so that's, that's what I'm using, but, uh, no, I've seen it. It's very yeah, cool. It's, it's like, it's like the kind of product, you know, a GPS, is the kind of product that you don't want to change every year. You, there's right. no need to, once you have it, it's like, do I do, do I buy a flat screen TV with Wi-Fi or not? Because no, right. you're going to keep your flat screen for a long time and Wi-Fi is going to change. Anyway. So the, actually the hybrid here's, I got the chance to use it. I have a friend who was working over with Bushnell and here's the thing that I loved about that hybrid. And I'm so off track now, but I'm good at That's that. That's all right. The, um, you have, when you look at a GPS, it gives you the front, middle, and back of the green. Right? Yeah. And it's like, okay, that helps. But if you have a 50-yard green, you know, if you have a really long green, but it still gives you a sense of where you are. But then you take that information and you use the rangefinder to tell you that the... Um, the exact distance of where the pin is, if in fact you can see the pin, that's what I hate about rangefinders. But if you see the pin, then all of a sudden you can calculate, oh, I, can't, I do have room behind the pin. I, I can go a little bit extra without worrying about going over. Oh, I, I do need to get it past the front edge of the, you know, the, 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 uh, the green. It really enhances and um, modifies your intent. Right. No, I, you're exactly right. That is, that's a, the perfect feature of the combo. Because I find myself with a range finder, if I don't have my, my GPS with me, is that you know I'll be trying to, uh, I call it heating up, I, I'll, I'll point at a guy that I know is on the back of the green or I'll aim at a tree at the back of the green or, or something along those lines. But if you have GPS and the laser, now you're really dialed in. And it doesn't take, everybody thinks, wow, that's going to slow the game down. No, no, no. no. It, it, takes, it, it, takes a spe- it takes a second to do the quick math and it makes you more decisive. You pull a club and you execute and that's what you want to do. Right, as opposed to trying to find the yardage marker on the ground, oh. walking off the. You're going to tell me that that slows the game down using your GPS in your eyes? No, no, exactly. But it, it, a nice job, Fred, on getting back to modifies intent. Uh, <laughs> that was a long, circuitous way to get back to the content. Um, I like how you tied it all up, though. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, but um, modifies intent, and, and let's talk about the confidence building element. Um, of what Tour Striker does, but that be, be, let's talk about that first. But I, that's not where I'm headed with this, and what I sure. learned from it. You know, it, so I've been I'm 43 years old, and I've been playing golf most of those years. And I, you know, from a young man on the on the range, you could always tell the difference between that sound of a player who can strike a golf ball, and then that that thin tink of a guy who you know, uses the bottom of the club all day long. And the only time that they have any real confidence is when the ball sits up, you know, perched on a tee or in higher grasp because everybody wants to get under it. You know, and the better players, you know, would prefer the ball be on a cart path versus in deep rough to, or in rough to where they can, quote, get under it because they can control the golf ball when there's nothing, you know, coming in between the, the club base and the ball. So it you can play your whole career of golf, your whole life's you know, rounds with the wrong intent and, and, st- and shooting the 80s, shooting the high 70s. A lot of people think, well, that's great. But, it, but there's, there's a better way. And that's why, you know, through teaching, you know, I did a simple little drill with, uh, with my students where I take a Sharpie and I draw a little circle in the sweet spot about the third groove up and I hit a shot with their club and I'd show them how I could smear the Sharpie mark. Then I'd explain, you know, how that's a combination of a little bit of a downward strike, not, not you know, smashing down, just a little downward strike and a little bit of forward lean. And, you know, they would try, they would try, they would try. And they would think they'd get it because the ball would go and, it would, you know, go down kind of straight and it would go up in the air. But they really weren't using the best part of the golf club off of tight lies. So that's when I decided, hey, you know, I'm gonna, I don't even need the bottom couple of grooves on my good swings. And I'm going to take them off so that people don't get the feedback from the bottom couple of grooves that they depend on. So it trains them to have a little bit of forward lean, which is what all good players have. And, and all good players have a different, you know, a variety of downward strike. Like Tom Watson is, quote, a picker, you know, but he's not a picker. He's not a flipper picker, which is an altogether different kind of picker. You know, he <laughs> exactly. He's a, he's a forward leaning striker who just happens to have a shallow angle of attack, you know, versus a guy like Boo Weekly, who's an amazing striker who can't putt it in the ocean from the shore. <laughs> you know, but Boo, you know, Boo is, has a ton of downward strike, 
you know, so he takes big pork chop divots, whereas Tom Watson is more of a shallow, you know, Mo Norman style bacon strip kind of guy. But the, you know, back to confidence, and this is my security, you know, security, I can't even say the word, circuitous. You know, circuitous route back to confidence is that once you learn how the tool really works, the game changes. And, and your ability to look at a golf ball in a bunch of a variety of lies on the golf course, you know, you're not a terrified of that tight lie on that wet bent grass, you know, from 60 yards out feeling like you're going to lay the sod over it because you're not trying to get under the ball anymore. You, you know, you're going to, it changes how you look and how, how you look at a lie for one and how your body responds to moving the tool. And that, and that's why, you know, get, you know, whether the, that's the pride I get from the club because I get the emails and the feedback from people and that's the pride I take, you know, Martin, you've changed my game. And, and, and I'm like, wow, that, that gives me an amazing sense of accomplishment as a guy who invented some gizmo. And I mean, that, that's really what gives me the warm fuzzies, you know? And, and honestly, I get some guys like, Oh, I hit this thing. Fine. Don't need it. Thanks. I'm like, okay, well, good. I'm glad you don't. And I'm glad you tried it. Thank you. But for those that have tried it and it's changed their intent, that's really cool. So I started playing the game at about the age you're at now. Okay. Okay. And yeah. and the guys that I play with are, are there are very few people that I play with, um, and maybe there's there's few there's few people out there playing that that's <laughs> that have been playing their whole life like you have. Sure. Um, at least not in my circles. And yeah. we're all pickers and boogers, and you know <laughs> we're just we're and, and sweepers, um, right. and. Ah, uh, boy, how many times I hear clunk chip versus chip clunk, right? You know, it's like they, right. they, hit, they hit the ground before they hit the ball. Of course, you yeah. Know, a couple inches behind, and it's like, sure. why don't you just stand back a little bit? You know, it's like if you're going to hit way back there, move, move the ball or stand forward, move the ball back in your stance. Um, and they're trying to lift the ball up, right? Isn't yeah, that what yeah. you're talking about? Of course. You know, and it really doesn't matter where you put the ball because you can put the ball the farther back you put it, the more you're still going to try to lift it, and you're just going to look all the more awkward. Yeah, so, you're going to lean back even farther? Is that, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's uh, why, you know, clearly changing the intent is the key. Right. You know, so that they understand that, wait a second, I don't have to try to get under this thing that sits on the ground. You know, there is, an, you know, the... the a set of golf clubs is really 14 wedges. Those wedges, one has 9 degrees or 10 degrees, your driver, and one has 4 degrees, your putter, and that's a wedge, and, you know, albeit not much of a wedge. And then there's a variety of wedges between the driver and the putter. You know, and those things, when they move in space, if they hit the golf ball below the equator, the ball is going to go up in the air. Now... It, so the idea of helping the ball in the air, you know, when you really break things down, it doesn't make any sense, but it's hard to convince the person. And you can tell them until you're blue in the face, but that's why it's good to say, okay, here, here's a tool. See how you do. If it doesn't work, you figure out your body, your internal language to try to make this work. Because if you can make it work, then the message to the ball will be more effective. You'll hit better shots enjoy the game more because then the tool is actually getting to the ball the way it's supposed to, as opposed to leaning back too much loft, um, you know, and, and not to kind of go on a rampage on this, but everybody says, you know, why do pros hit it so darn far? Well, you know, they have good club head speed for one, but let's just say that I swung my driver or let's just say six iron. I went and swung my six iron 60 miles an hour, like a near six now, 65 miles an hour, like, you know, Joe Club golfer. And, and, you know, the difference is I apply my six iron at 65 miles an hour differently than the same guy who swings at 65 miles an hour. It's far less of an oblique strike. So there's the spin loft, a fancy term for the, for how the club face marries to the ball at impact is way more effective than another 65 mile an hour strike. And the sound's different. The compression's different. So, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to be, you know, Bubba Watson speed. It, you can be a beautiful striker no matter what speed. And, th and that's what's important. You don't have to be Bubba. You can be your own 65 mile an hour, you know, elderly, whatever, but you can strike it beautifully at whatever speed. 
And this really amplifies the, the cliche, uh, if it is cliche or it's just fact, of the two uh, myths about golf. It's like, w- w- not myths. <sighs> Come on, Fred. Where you got to hit down on the ball to make it go up and you got to swing slow to make it go farther. You know, the whole swing slow thing is rubbish. I mean, it... Swing easy? Swing... Well, it's, you have to swing effectively. See, there's... Uh, I never, slow. ever, ever swing slowly. No tour player ever swings slowly. You know, slowing down, you know, when, when a club golfer slows down and hits it better, basically they're sequencing their swing more effectively. So if slowing down helps them sequence the strike better, then slowing down is probably what they need to do. However it would be way better for them to learn how to swing faster in the right sequence and hit it that much farther. See what I mean? So yeah. swinging easy, slowing down is, is a Band-Aid for correct sequence, which, which is great. If, if that's what you have to do to hit it more effectively, then slow down. But my, my um, goal would be to take that golfer and show him how to rev it up with the correct sequence and really enjoy the way it flies. So the idea that uh, the first one, hit down to make the ball go up? You know, I mean, hit down to make it go up, that is, I, I hardly use that when I coach. I mean, I'd say one in 10 lessons, I, you know, I tell the people to hit down. I'm more a fan of forward lean because it's, the down part is almost built in. You know, we stand, we're, we're standing above the ball. The club moves around us in a, in a you know, in a circle the club naturally is working on its way down. The only time you're not hitting down is if you're trying to hit up. So, you know, on occasion, I'll put some obstructions like a towel or, you know, I use a lot of pool noodles and I'll put one behind the ball to influence somebody's path who's too sweepy, too picky. Um, you know, and that's if the tour striker doesn't, you know, get them, change them right away. I'll, you know, I'll even influence their their um, intent more by putting something back there that they have to use to, you know, as a hurdle to get over before they can touch the ground. But the, uh, you know, I don't even use hit down very often. It's, it's not in my vocabulary teaching most of my lessons. You, you use the term forward shaft lean shaft lean. What's the difference between that and pressing? Okay. Forward pressing, you know, that's a great question. And I posted it on YouTube. Because everybody asks me this, and this is, so, you know, Martin, why don't I set up an impact and then just, you know, just return there? There's a big, big, I hope the listeners really tune into this because when you swing a golf club, an interesting thing happens. The arms during your backswing, okay, let's just say at a dress, your arms are hanging comfortably from your shoulders Mm -hmm. and you've got your grip on there. And let's hope your grip's effective because, man, a good grip really helps. Got to start with the PGA, right? Oh, God, you have to. Oh. When you make your backswing now, your arms actually compress against your body. Your left arm, your upper left arm works against your pec. Your right arm supports your left arm and your left arm's basically compressed against your body. That is your impact condition. There's a level of compression that is attained in your backswing that you actually need to deliver to impact. You can't press into that position. So, yeah, you can say, yeah, but Nicholas set up with his shaft and left arm in a dress, you know, sure he did, but he also compressed his arm against his body. And then his body was far more open at impact, meaning, you know, his hips were open to the target line. His shoulders were opening to the target line. He was delivering those compressed arms through impact. So on the YouTube video I just posted on my channel, I try to explain that, that setting up at impact is pretty much useless because you're not going to return there unless your compressed arms get back to the golf ball. And there's a couple of things that happen, Fred, like our spine tilt. I mean, if you can imagine our spine at a dress, you know, let's just say it's straight up and down. In most cases, it should be tilted a little bit away from the target, meaning your hip bone is closer to the target than your neck bone to really simplify things. Well, at impact, your hip bone is a little closer to the target and your neck bone is a little farther away from the target. So that is called a secondary axis tilt, really, you know, silly high level rubbish that some people don't need to understand, but some people should understand because that helps deliver those compressed arms to the golf ball. So you can have an effective impact position. Um, that, so to sum up, that is why setting up in a press position doesn't really mean you'll get back there even in chipping. I mean, it helps to set up in an impact or pressed position in chipping, but 
if your left arm comes away from your side, you're really not doing yourself any favors. And are you not delofting the club when your hands are out in front like that? Absolutely, but every good player delofts a golf club. They don't hit it with the with the vertical shaft. That's where that's why the vertical shaft is when you're sweeping. Exactly. Every every good player has four to six degrees of forward shafting, which isn't a great deal. But that four degrees really talks to the golf ball differently than hitting it with a vertical shaft. Because to th- think about it this way too, a vertical shaft is the hands have basically stalled. The shaft is catching up, so the lever length of the club head to the to the uh, to the body is really just the length of the golf club when the hands have stalled. So when your hands keep going, the lever length in essence now can be longer. It can be from the bottom of the club up to your shoulder. So now you know I forget what the famous Greek fellow said, but give me a lever long enough and I can move the world. And in golf, leverage is is important, and that kind of comes back to the whole idea of swinging easier and sequencing and that when some people do quote slow down they deliver a better lever to the golf ball rather than they don't hit hard with the right feels they hit hard with a sense of speeding up their hands well speeding up their hands really stalls the you know the the circumference of the wrists the 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 sphere of the wrists if you will so the club head you know the hands feel like a lot's going on but the golf ball doesn't feel like a lot's going on the body feels like, oh, my hands are moving fast. I'm moving the club head fast, but the golf ball is not getting compressed. So you look at a Freddie Couples or an Ernie Els, you go, wow, look at how easy he swings. And that, again, that's more rubbish than I care to talk about because if you're around Freddie and Ernie when they hit it, there's nothing slow and easy about it. Just the visual, the sequencing is beautiful. It's it's Barishnikov and sequencing. Yeah, it's smooth. It's it's, very- it's perfectly smooth. It's yeah. sequenced beautifully, however there's a ton of speed there and the ball is just murdered. Mm. Can you, and I apologize, but you have a lot of YouTube videos that'll help this out and support it. But uh, it, since we have you here now, can you physically describe the tour striker and what you've created and what it does for you? And then I'll sure. tell you what it did for me. Well, yeah. You know, the, so the view and to the listeners out there, basically what I did was I, I designed a club where I took the leading edge, which a standard golf club, the face goes right to the sole of the golf club. Everybody knows that. I elevated that leading edge to where it's about at the equator of a golf ball. So to get that elevated leading edge on the tour striker below the equator of the ball, so you can get the effect of loft on the club to the ball. Which so is ball what we're talking up, about. Yeah. yeah we have to lean the shaft a little bit because if you lean the shaft and that elevated leading edge gets closer to the ground and presents loft to the ball. If you try to scoop the tour striker, all you do is present the rounded flat bulbous part of the sole to the ball and you get like a warbly little, you know, topper that goes out there. So pretty quickly you look at it and go, well, wait a second for me to present loft to the ball. I have to move the shaft this way. I have to, you'll start to internalize feels to get the club to present that loft to the ball, which will give you a different sense of rhythm and timing, which will help you hit it better. And then you can figure out how, what your personal speed is to, de- to deliver that, you know, particular rhythm and timing to hit your best shots. Cause we're all different. The club that you had me test out for myself was the seven iron. Right. I generally hit my seven iron about one forty five ish to maybe one forty two, one forty eight. Right in that in okay. that range. If I have a shot that's like, well, I'll pull my seven iron out here. Sure. When I started hitting, you know, halfway through the bucket, when I started realizing what the heck was going on with with the tourist striker, all of a sudden I was hitting the ball one sixty five. Good, good. That's common. But is that? Is that because your club is different than my club, or is because I was hitting the ball right and I really am not hitting the ball properly? Well, so here's the thing. You know, I always say manufacturers aren't doing us any favors because <laughs> they they make the equipment. They they always put the center of gravity so low. There's two things going on. One, you're getting the club with a little more forward shafting, so you're delofting the club a few degrees. Your strike is therefore less oblique and more direct, so the ball is getting squeezed more, so it flies farther. With my okay. club. No, with with the tour striker. With the tour striker, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's why you hit it farther than your club. Also, on the tour striker, the center of gravity, the center of gravity is a little bit higher, so the contact's a little bit more direct, less oblique. Again, see your club. All the manufacturers put the center of gravity really low because they think we all stink, 
And the, the contact is, is always just a tiny bit more misaligned. The, the whole idea with the tour striker is to teach you that you can have some forward lean coupled with a little bit of downward strike, which de-lofts the face, increases the compression as it relates to ball and club head. So that's why you get a little bit more distance immediately with the tour striker. Now, hopefully, when you go back to your club, even though you're looking at your you know, OEM manufacturer golf club, you try to ingrain the same feel, and I guarantee you that your yardage, that 142 to 148, will get closer to you know, what you can do with the tour striker 7 iron at 165. And so my, so that takes me to my next question is how do I – I mean, obviously, I need to practice with it a lot more than just two buckets, you know. And hitting on the mat was probably a lot different than hitting it off of grass. Um, sure. But how can, without hiring an instructor, I'm just mm-hmm. working with my tour striker now, and Dr. Zabrodsky says, I have 20 training aids, and this is by far the best one. That's nice. Um, how do I get it from the range to the golf course? What... I mean, just keep working with it. Do I well, understand? I, I always tell feel? people, you know, go back and forth, get your seven iron, get the tour striker seven iron. And the seven iron is my favorite model. Actually. I love the wedge and I love the seven iron for a variety of reasons. We can talk about that later, but hit 10 balls with your club, hit 10 with the tour striker, hit 10 with your club, hit 10 with the tour striker. Mm-hmm. Try to ask your, your body, ask yourself, well, what am I feeling here? Well, what's going on? Try to see if you can't narrow the gap between what you're doing with your club and how you make the tour striker work. Because if you're making the tour striker work, there's a little subtle difference there, and you have to key in on it. Some instructors are really good at training you how to key in on it, but you're the best at it. You're the best at telling yourself what to feel. Because frankly, like I don't care what you tell yourself to feel. If you make the tool work, you're telling yourself something nice that's effective. Mm-hmm. And it could be like the famous slow down thing that everybody tells themselves, right? Mm-hmm. To, which in essence just really helps their sequence and they hit it better. I'd rather tell somebody to speed up, but show them how the sequence has to work so that they can pound it way past their buddies and make all kinds of jokes on how you could build a Walmart between where their ball is and where your ball is. <laughs> I've never heard that line, but I'm going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, so, um, yeah, just keeps switching back and forth. Um, one of the things that I that I recognized early on in hitting that bucket is – um, with the tour striker is that when I make contact and hopefully I I'm reading this properly, but when I make contact with the ball, I noticed, um, first of all, I, I don't get draw on the ball and I've never figured out how to put draw on the ball. Mm -hmm. And if anything, my ball will fade or just, Mm -hmm. just go right of the target. Okay. Sure. And one of the things that became really apparent to me with the tour striker, um, at the driving range was that when I'm making contact, I'm right-handed, my left, mm-hmm. the back of my left hand mm-hmm. is is like almost facing the ball. I, I mean, it's just, it's like I'm trying to slice a, 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 a tennis shot, you know, or a ping pong mm-hmm. paddle. So, and then all of a sudden, once I realized that if I made the back of my left hand at contact face the target, face down the fairway, Mm-hmm. I was making much better contact. Hey, you just taught yourself a very valuable lesson that you could have paid an instructor to tell you. Ooh. But you, you, you see what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was mind boggling to me. It's like, oh, really? So then all of a sudden now I'm doing the, the Tai Chi swing, Lynn Marriott's Tai Chi swing, you know, really <laughs> slowly yeah. and coming back down and seeing that when I'm making contact with a ball, my hands are facing you know, the direction the ball goes like, Oh, that's why that happens all the time. <laughs> Amazing. And now with the, with the, your, your forward, I keep wanting to say press, but I don't want to call it a press. Sure. Um, but, but turning, keeping my wrists, bring my wrists around a little more, um, is going to help me dramatically. Well, I think it also when the club, when the, when the head is trailing the handle, okay. When there is some lean into impact, that naturally makes the swing go just a, a little bit more inside out as well. Mm-hmm. So that that shaft lean is really, you know, if you could get on Doppler radar like the new fancy machine track man, if the shaft is leaning, then the path at the bottom of the swing is inside out. So and that's what most amateurs want. They want to hit that draw. 
actually some of the better players that you know use use the uh, like uh, uh, the better you get, like the more effective ball strike you become, to where you become very proficient at striking a golf ball, really low handicappers and you know club champs and better. The sense of striking isn't really so much inside out anymore. You kind of go the opposite way. You've got so much shaft lean, you know, four plus four, five, six, seven degrees, that you have to feel like you swing across the ball to the left in order to not overdraw the golf ball. Mm-hmm. So it's funny, you know, when you're on the one spectrum and you're a slicer, you know, and you're coming over the top and your your path is really right to left. Well, when you start to hit some shots and then, you know, I'm going to come take a step back because you said, you know, how do I ingrain it with a tour striker to your club? You know, I would say, you know, do the 10 and 10 routine, but also like just a bunch of half shots, like, you know, shoulder high to shoulder high, nine to three type swings to where, you know, you've got a sense of when you slow things down, there's an opportunity to learn is what, you know, over, over the years teaching people, taking it back a notch so that they have a bit more sense of what their body's doing and telling them. So, you know, when you do the 10 and 10 drill, also do a bunch of, you know, nine to three type swings to where you gain some confidence and you're aware of, of your path and where the shaft's leaning and the difference in the sensation of strike. Yeah, you might only hit it, you know, 60% of your distance that way, but that's okay. You're, you're in a learning environment. You're trying to feel things so you can therefore, you know, um, heat it up and, and, and make your full shots. I just want to make sure that we're clarifying this. The 10 and 10 is the 10 swings with the 7 iron, 10 swings with the tour striker. Correct. And, but the 9 to 3 is your position. <laughs> Those, yes. These numbers you're throwing at me, and all of a sudden it's math class, and I'm totally confused. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, exactly. So, you're exactly. as my therapist would say to me, uh, your time is up for today. Um, <laughs> uh, and I just want to make sure that uh, we tell people where to go and also uh, give a moment to talking about your academy. Oh, thanks. Yeah, well, tourstriker.com is, is the website where that you know you can research the clubs and take a look at that. And then uh, I, I coach down at the Raven Golf Club Phoenix in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. It's a great place to coach. And it's a part- dry heat. It's a dry heat, exactly. <laughs> well, in the sunny summer, you can Phoenix. come and see me in lovely, uh, lovely Sun River, Oregon, Central Oregon. So it's not it, that's a dry heat there too, but it's uh, not the oven that Phoenix is in the summertime. But uh, my partner and I, Jeff Ritter, who's been on the show many times, oh yeah, is, love uh, Jeff. We're college buddies, and you know we've got a great, we've got a b- bunch of great programs down there, and you know we we do some interesting things like we coach, and we also you know to enhance learning, we've got uh, we've invited Mike Bennett and Andy Plummer to come out on the twenty first of January. We're going to do a big co instructed deal out at the Raven, so that'll be really fun to get all all four of us kind of working with these students and the you know their stack and tilt side of things and Jeff's. Jeff's, you know, stuff and my stuff and come together as a wow group to really help some golfers. So we're excited awesome. about that. And then we run the schools. You know, I run a school every other week and then we do a bunch of private coaching. And yeah, if somebody's, you know, inclined to come see me, we'll have a blast. And can you find out more about the Academy at touristracker.com? You sure can. There's an Academy tab right there and you can read all about the programs Jeff and I have at the Raven. And also, uh, your phone is obviously ringing on the table there. Um, <laughs> I tell you, I can hear things. You're uh, good. <laughs> and then also, uh, people, highly advise people to uh, head over to YouTube and just type in Martin Chuck. Um, and Thanks. because there's a wealth of information there and it, explanations on how to use the tour striker. Yeah, yeah. No, there's. I get all kinds of questions from uh, you know golfers out there, and I and if it, if I can't type a quick one, I just say you know what, I'll post in the video that way. It can help more people and. Usually the the video message is a little bit more um, easy to understand than than reading in words. At least that's how I operate. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do now. Now I know that uh, longtime listeners of, of Golf Smarter would know they're sitting there waiting. Come on, Fred, announce the uh, announce the deal. Announce mm-hmm. the deal. There is no deal right now, folks. I'm sorry to say, but we're working on it. Martin and I are talking about absolutely. it. Absolutely, we'll, we'll do on something. It. But and, uh, you... um, but do me the, the audience can do me this favor. Send me your questions that you have for Martin. Yes. Okay. Do this. Go to click on the Hey Fred button at Golf Smarter. I'll tell you. I'll do you one better, Fred. Okay. Let me do, they send you a question. I'll give if they send you a question. I'll give you a, a specific coupon code for them, and we'll know. Um, we'll know that they're your fans. And why not? Okay. There you go, folks. I don't know what the coupon code is. I don't know what he's got in mind. It'll be We've not discussed this, but go <laughs> ahead and please. And, you know, because it's a podcast, someone's going to be listening to this the day we published it, and someone's going to be listening to it in two months. So this is going to be this okay. steady stream of audience. But please, folks, here's what I want you to do, my friends. 
Golf Smarter Community members, all of you, <laughs> click on the Hey Fred button at GolfSmarter.com and send me a question with your information so that I can forward it to Martin and let's see what let's it prove to him that we are an active engaged <laughs> community and get him to come back to golf smarter on a regular basis hopefully yeah, um, to. to answer more of your questions i i just i i again i so much enjoyed working with your product um i saw the value almost instantly and you are my friend you are an excellent communicator you really explained it well and um, oh, i really you. appreciate you spending some time with us uh, on the show well if you as herbie Pennock said if you golf you're my friend and i can say with 99.9 percent of that that's the case so it's a pleasure talking to you and hopefully your people out there enjoy the content and you know if they want a tour striker they need to hit the hey fred button and let's let's work something out 